So today's topic is what others won't tell you about self-doubt and self-confidence mm. and fear of rejection and the piece that's missing. So if you are doing, if you've done affirmations and visualization and those kind of techniques and they've worked for you, fantastic. That's great. Keep doing that. This is for those who have done like me <laughs> and, and you as well, right? Yeah. Yep who do the affirmations with the feeling and the visualization and all of that. And for some reason, it doesn't change anything. And the reason it doesn't change anything is that limiting beliefs, core limiting beliefs, like I don't deserve and um, I'm not good enough. And um, what will others think? Who do I think I am? Or, you know, those kinds of limiting beliefs if they're not changing, it's because the brain is referring to evidence that proves they're true. So what what is this evidence? Can we can we pause there for a second and talk a little bit about what, what do you mean when you say evidence? Nah. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So from birth, as we grow, of course, the brain is growing and developing. And as we experience life, the brain forms a structure of who we are and how the world works. So self-image and worldview. And of course, everybody is unique. And so these experiences, as we experience mm. something, the brain adds that experience to who we are and how the world works. And the next experience we have is filtered through the previous data. And so it forms who we are and how the world works. Now, as we go about our daily lives as adults, the unconscious part of the brain, so this is, of course, without conscious awareness, the unconscious part of the brain is referring to those implicit, which means unconscious, childhood memories that prove who we are and how the world works. So let's say somebody has, um, you know, they do affirmations, and if their mm. childhood experiences don't contradict that, then it'll work. But if they're doing the visualization and the affirmations, but while they're doing that consciously, the unconscious part of the brain is referring to the so-called fact that they're not worthy or it's dangerous to uh, to promote yourself or people are judging, you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So just, just by way of maybe a, a personal example, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that in earlier uh, iterations of my business life, whenever I thought about doing something live, you know, imagining yeah. myself doing this 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I, I, I do remember what it, what it felt like back then trying to imagine getting, doing a live stream or even any kind of a video kind of thing there. I know now that that feeling that was popping up related back to that little me standing alone in front of the classroom trying to recite a poem that I didn't rehearse, I didn't practice, I felt completely, you know, so is that kind of what we're talking about here? Yes. That we're, we're um, drawing from past it, experience? It's partly, so that, that certainly would contribute, but mm. more importantly, it's referring to things that don't appear to be connected. So for your experience, that, that poem in saying in front of the class and that, mm -hmm. your experience of that will have already been determined by whatever you'd experienced before that. Because not all kids who stand up in front of the class and try to think of something will have the same inner experience. Mm -hmm. Some will, mm -hmm. you know, feel self-conscious. Some will feel upset. Some will feel angry or frustrated. Some will find it funny. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on the previous references. And then each one builds upon the previous ones. It may not even be something that I can remember. Correct. But it was what that little me that was standing there in front of the classroom experienced about the way the world was. Yes. So I kind of, and, you know, I know that, you know, for myself, it wasn't this, you know, overly traumatic childhood, but there was a feeling of speaking out is is an unsafe thing kind of do. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's it. And so in the same way, you know, if I wanted to tell myself that if I wanted to believe that snow was hot, you know, I'm going, snow is hot, snow is hot, snow is hot, but I've held snow and I know it's cold. 
So as I'm repeating over and over, snow is hot, snow is hot, the unconscious part of my brain is referring to the fact from previous experience that snow is cold. And in the same way, if I, like I used to have a terrible self-consciousness and yeah, I know it, people find that odd because <laughs> I was a professional actress and singer, but, but here's the key that I discovered is that I had confidence in performing but my self-esteem and self-worth were rock bottom and I didn't have that self-worth. So I used to, you know, do affirmations and I am worthy, I do deserve and all of that. As I was doing that, the unconscious part of my brain was referring to countless memories of, you know, don't be so stupid and, you know, who do you think you are and don't stop bragging and all of that and, mm -hmm. and things that we witness as well. Now, what do we do about that? I hear you ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the wonderful news is that those references, those unconscious references mm -hmm. can be changed. Now, mm -hmm. when you change the evidence, the rest is automatic. So let's say you change the evidence from being bullied in school to being popular in school, that kind of experience. So imagine you had the ideal childhood. You felt safe, you felt loved, you had everything you needed, you had lots of support and enthusiasm and encouragement from your parents, your parents were safe and happy. Imagine the kind of person that you would have become with that kind of background. Now, the brilliant news is that the there's a difference between the conscious mind and the unconscious part of the brain. So the unconscious part of the brain, the biggest part that's mm. running everything, not just our organs and all of that, but also our chemical state and our reactions to things. And it's the part that's referring to those childhood memories. And the key here is that the unconscious part of the brain can't tell the difference mm -hmm. between reality and imagination, can't judge something as unrealistic, and can't <laughs> use logic or reason. <laughs> so it will believe the new references mm -hmm. while you still consciously know exactly what happened. So this is not like you know fooling yourself or gaslighting yourself or anything like that. And there's a lot to it, but we have a free webinar that goes into a lot more detail. I've just put a, a ticker thing on the screen. Wow, See, look I at did you. That. Yeah, fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and the link to that will be is in the description uh, of this video. So you can register for that webinar. As I say, it's free. And that will go into a lot more detail on exactly how this works and answer the questions that you've probably got. Yeah. Was absolutely. that everything we had to say? Yeah. You know, and I think I know that the work, doing this work, you know, initially, there there can be some resistance there because it it, it feels like, well, how can I change how can I go about changing what, you know, what actually happened? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things for me that really helped was understanding that whatever happened back then isn't happening anymore. It's not happening right, right now. And that what we're holding on to, what we're remembering is really just, it's just data. Mm -hmm. It's just data that we're holding in our brains and our brains have the ability to change that data. I'm not fooling myself into believing that something else happened in my childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm literally changing the data so that it's changing, it's changing my neurochemistry in right. the moment. So that as I'm doing this live stream right now, the neurochemical feelings that I'm feeling, they do actually match up with a new version of me that is standing there and confidently redoing this poem. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, you know, sorry, you know, it's like, uh, I don't mean to get, but I, I, I'm feeling the, uh, the goosebumps <laughs> yeah. of like this new story that I've created, this new implicit childhood memory that's there for me now is fueling that confidence. Mm -hmm. And now I'm able to, to do this based upon that foundational memory, yeah. which didn't actually happen. That's it. Yeah. And you <laughs> so, know consciously it didn't happen. I know consciously but it didn't happen. The unconscious happen. part of your brain has no idea. No, the unconscious part of my brain is tapping into, it's accessing yeah. the memory of confidently standing there and projecting and getting that message across. And that is fueling 
a complete change. That's it. You know, isn't that brilliant? Isn't it, that brilliant? It's super information exciting. that it's no one knows exciting. about. Very few people know about it. Let us know in the comments if this is new to you and what you think of it. We would love to hear from you. And the other analogy that mm. we often use mm. is if you want to drive from the city to the beach, but your GPS is still set for the city, then of course, every time you start heading towards the beach, your GPS will turn you around and guide you back to the city <laughs> automatically, right? In a thousand feet, make a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so what you, what you need to do in order to get from where you are, which is the city, to the beach where you want to be, is you need to change the GPS coordinates. And no amount of telling the GPS <laughs> that you want to go to the beach is going to change that. You have to change the coordinates. And once you do that, mm -hmm. the GPS automatically guides you to the beach. You don't have to do much except drive and follow it, of course. And in the same way, wherever you are now is mm -hmm. your current location and the, your goals, your dreams, the things you want to achieve in your life, the things you want to change about yourself and your life. Uh, that's your destination. That's the destination you want to get to, your desired destination. So if you aren't able, if you haven't been able to up until now move in that direction or reach that destination, it's because your GPS is still set for the previous where you were before. So now you can change your brain's GPS to match the results you want to achieve in your life. And then your brain will be striving to keep you in alignment with that new self image, that new mm -hmm. worldview and the new results you want. Yeah. And I, like anything else, you know, and I, I've got a background of, you know, having grown up working with tools. And if you want to be able to do a task, and in my case, uh, it was woodworking. Uh, but if you want to create that really fine project, that artistic piece, you know, having a basic understanding of how the tool works. And in this case, it's understanding this, this machinery the machinery of your subconscious mind, how the machinery is working in the background. And once, and, and that's really what they haven't been able to provide, you yeah. know, is, is that basic understanding of what's going on in the machinery. So once we have an understanding of how the machine or the GPS works, any of those analogies work, once you understand how the machinery is working and you adjust and actually step up and take control of that machinery, then it's happening automatically in the background because it's been happening automatically in the background all of our lives. It's just that now we know what coordinates to plug in or we know now how to use this machine to move us in the direction that we actually want to go. Absolutely. Well said. Hey, amen. <laughs> well said. <laughs> All right. So let us know in the comments what you thought of this, if this information mm. is new to you. Mm. And don't forget in the description of this video, there's a link where you can register for a free uh, webinar mm. that gives you the training on this, that gives you all of the information you need yep. in order to fully understand how this works and what you need to do in order to change those coordinates and how you can end up with the same authentic, natural automatic self-belief and confidence that others like Gary V and Alex Hormozy and Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins and Oprah Winfrey and all of those other people mm, have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and the other thing, I'm going to give you one small <laughs> teaser here as well. So oh. speaking of all those people, we also know that there are plenty of successful people in the world who had bad childhoods. Mm -hmm. Some of them had trauma in their childhoods. Mm -hmm. Now, in that webinar, I'll give you the answer as to why they are successful without having changed their childhoods, because it's a little bit of a longer explanation. So it's in that webinar. And we will see you all again next time around. Yes. <laughs>